This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and this is a T-Track module, and we're gonna build it today. Welcome back everybody. Today is something that I've been wanting to build for a long time and show you guys, and that is a T-Track module. And I've been wanting to get into building modules for a while. I think they're a really great way to be creative with model railroading in a compact space. And I figured since I love Kato Unitrack and I'm an inscaler, that T-Track would be the place to start. So let's check it out. Now, what is a T-Track? T-Track is a module standard that is predominantly in scale and is based on Kato Unitrack. The modules are two and three quarter inches tall, and they range from typically around one to four feet long, with one foot and one eighth inch intervals for size. The straight modules are typically eight and a quarter inches deep, whereas curved modules are typically a little over 14 inches deep. Here's the supplies you're going to need to build the module. You'll need at least four feet of one by three board. I bought an eight foot section in case I messed up six inch and a half wood screws, four quarter 20 T-nuts, one two foot by two foot section of quarter inch plywood Lawan, and you'll also need a drill and a circular saw to build this. We're going to be making a single straight module. Now for the frame, you're going to need four boards, two six and three quarter inch boards, and two 12 inch boards. I mark my lines and make my cuts. For the top, you're going to need an eight and a quarter inch by 12 and one eighth inch board from the quarter inch Lawan plywood. Once you're done, take your two long boards and mark two holes about an inch and a half off the edge and three quarters of an inch from each edge on top and bottom. You'll do this on each end of the board. Next, you drill your holes. Once you've drilled your holes, take your inch and a half wood screws and start them into the board. Then take your cross beams, align them with where the screws are going to go in, and screw them in so that they attach. You'll do the same process for the other side as well. Once that's done, you can put your top board on. I use two screws to attach the top board in the middle of the board, right in the cross beams to attach it. Now, flip your module upside down and measure about two inches in from the edge onto the cross beams and drill quarter inch holes into each corner. You'll then take four T-nuts and hammer them into each hole. This will make doing minor adjustments to height a little bit easier down the road. Now for the track. 
you're going to need two 248 millimeter sections and two 62 millimeter sections. This totals out to 310 millimeters, which is just over 12 and 1 8 inches, the length of the module. You can also do this with Kato double track sections. I'm just doing it with single sections because this is the way it's demonstrated originally in building a module. You'll set the first track an inch and a half off of the front edge of the module. Now I use my old go-to to attach the track to the board and that is latex caulk. Now you're gonna to wanna to be very, very precise when you're measuring and putting this down so that it will match up with any other key track module because this is a standard. Now if this is also a power section, you're gonna to wanna to drill some holes into your board and feed in a terminal unit joiner and attach it to your track. There's 33 millimeters of spacing between the outer and inner tracks or basically the same size as a Kato double track piece. Now to align the pieces before I do the final glue down, I'm going to use a section of double track just to make sure that I have the spacing correct. You may want to consider using something like tape to hold them down once you have them aligned. Once they're glued down, I let them dry. And here is the module. I'm really happy with the way this module turned out and I was actually pleasantly surprised at how easy it was to construct with just a few tools. So that is how we built this T-Track module. You can see it's pretty simple to build one of these. All you have to do is uh, scale it up for the appropriate size and, and look up everything. And they're really easy to build and you can also customize them and do all sorts of different things with them. So um, there's a few standards. I've linked the T-Track wiki down below and you guys can check that out. Now, if you don't feel like building one of these from scratch like I just did, you can also buy kits for various sizes. I'll link a place to get those as well in the description below. And uh, there's also some other standards. There's things like Fremo for uh, HO scale. There's Intrac. Um, there's just there's, there's several different standards for modules when it comes to model railroading. So definitely look those up if you want to look at something a little bit different. But T-Track module, pretty cool, pretty easy to build. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They're listed right here. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. A lot of behind the scenes stuff. Plus I tip them off to some things that I have in the works that may end up being on an episode. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. I am ready for fall and winter. I have all these bugs. Price of living in the south in the summer. Ah. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital Land. <laughs>